What is up, YouTube? Venthros here, coming at you with a very, very well overdue video uh, with an RPG Maker tutorial video. Uh, I have just been extremely busy. I'm not going to get into all that like every other YouTuber does, but uh, I just want to let you guys know that after looking at all the feedback I've received, all the emails I've gotten, uh, either supporting me or criticizing me, I actually welcome all, I, all of it. Uh, it has been the sole reason that I've decided to bring this channel back to life and start uh, continue to put these videos up. So without any ado whatsoever, today we're making a cutscene. At the end of the cutscene, we're going to have a character join our party. So let's get started with that. Now, in previous tutorial videos, we did a quest for this old man in our inn in which we gave him a sword. He asked us to find a sword and we gave it to him. When we gave him the sword, we created a control switch called Gave Sword. And that is going to serve as our trigger for this cutscene. So let's go back out to our town here. And we need to create two events. The first event we need to create is the actual character joining our party. And the second event is going to be the actual cutscene itself. It's going to control the flow of the cutscene. So... Before we make our first event, the character that joins a party, we need to talk about actors for a second. Go up to your database, click that or hit F9, and the very first tab is actors. And as you can see here on the left, you got a list of 10 different actors. And actors is RPG Maker's way of separating playable characters from everything else. So the actor that we want to join our party is Natalie. She's actor number two. Actor number one is Eric, and he's our player character. So just keep that in mind for right now. And we are going to place Natalie right here, just to make the event uh, the cutscene very quick and easy. We're going to call this new event Natalie. We're going to set a condition that our Gave Sword switch is on. We're going to use a graphic for Natalie. She's under Actor 4. We're going to use this one here. And I want Natalie to run to the character, so use the speed drop-down box for two times faster. And for right now, that's all we have to do with Natalie. So for our cutscene event, uh, let's place it somewhere where a character can't interact with it. So I'm going to use this tree right here behind everything. We're going to call this event cutscene. We're going to use the same condition. We want the same Gave Sword switch to be on. We're not going to use a graphic. The only thing we're going to change over here is the trigger. Obviously, we want the cutscene to happen automatically, so we're going to use an auto run trigger, which will start the event as soon as the Gave Sword switch is on. Hit OK for the time being. And let's look at the map. Wherever you decided to place Natalie, you're going to have to count the number of tiles and figure out the position to have Natalie move to our player. So in this case, our player is going to come out of the inn and is going to be here. Natalie is already here. So she needs to move one, two, three, four tiles up in order to get to the player. So let's open up our event again, our cutscene event. And our first command is going to be on page 2, and it is set move route. So click that and look at all these movement commands we can use. Now for now, we only need to use move up. So we're going to click that four times. And we're also going to set the target. Right now the target is player. We don't want to move the player, we want to move Natalie. So click the drop down and find your Natalie event four move ups and that's it next we're going to show some text it's going to be from Natalie asking to join the party so show text we're going to use her face graphic which is in actor four can I come with you now use this use this opportunity to experiment with different uh, you know uh, conversation uh, tags. You make it as long or as short as you want to, but for this purpose of this tutorial, we're going to make it real short and uh, short and sweet. Can I come with you? Then our player character is going to say sure. 
He's also an under under actor four, and there he is right there. Hit OK, and all the the art. That's the extent of our conversation. Now I'm gonna hit OK real fast. At this point, Natalie is about to join our party. So when Natalie joins the party, we actually have to get rid of the Natalie event because we don't want Natalie to be in our party and also standing in front of the character. So open your cutscene back up, and we're going to create a switch called Natalie Joins. So use the control switch command. I already created the Natalie Joins switch, so go ahead and do that. Natalie joins, we want it to turn on. And we're going to use this as a condition for a second page on the Natalie event. So let's do that. Hit OK. Open up your Natalie event. Create a new event page. And make the condition that the Natalie joins is on. Hit OK. And that's all we have to do with Natalie. That event is finished. And we're actually almost done the cutscene event also. So let's open that back up. Now when you play an RPG, someone joins your party, you usually get a sound effect or a short song or something and some text that says so-and-so has joined your party or whatever. So let's do those two things and actually issue the command that puts Natalie in our party. So the first thing I want to do is I want to play a sound effect. Actually, I want to play... Excuse me, I want to play an ME. And I'm going to use the item. I'll play it for you real fast. Sweet. Doesn't have to be anything crazy. So we're going to do that. We're going to show some text. And since it's a system message, I like to use dim background for the system messages. So we'll write Natalie has joined the party. Hit OK. And next thing we have to do is actually put her in the party. So you do that. First page under the party section. Go to change party member. The actor we want is Natalie. She's actor number two. And we want to add her to the party. And don't worry about initialize right now. Go ahead and leave that unchecked. And hit OK. Now Natalie is in the party. And the Natalie event that we had is gone. But the last thing we have to do is we actually have to end, we have to end this cutscene. So the way we're going to end it is with the self switch. Now in past videos I probably would have used a regular switch. I kind of overlooked the self switch. And uh, that's kind of my bad. Uh, it, it actually keeps your project neater. And the self switch only applies to the event you're working on. So if you're just turning an event off after you're done with it, using a self, a self switch is so much better. So let's double click here, go to control self switch on the first page, and you get up to four self switches, but we only need one, so we're going to use self switch A, we're going to turn it on, and just like with other events, we're going to make a new event page, instead of clicking up here, we're going to click down here where it says self switch, A is on, everything else is fine, and our cutscene is finished. Let's check it out. Now, like I was saying at the beginning of the video, uh, we had to go down to that cave down there and get this sword for this old man. And uh, I just wanted to save some time. So I already have the sword in my inventory. And I'm going to give it to him. You hand the man his sword. Now the Gave Sword switch is on, and our cutscene cut should begin now. Can I come with you? Sure. Boom, she's in the party, and you notice that she disappeared from in front of us. That's the outcome we want. And just to make sure everything is good to go, I'm going to go inside the inn and walk back out. And as you can see, the event didn't start again. You can see that Natalie's in our party, and you know that our cutscene was successful. Now, one thing to keep in mind is, by default, RPG Maker has uh, something that I absolutely hate, but it actually shows everyone in your party walking around like a choo-choo train. I hate that. 
I actually had that turn off, but by default it's on. If you want to toggle that, go up here to your database, go to your system tab, all the way to the right, uh, second to the right, excuse me, click that, and then under the options box, you'll see show player followers. It's on by default, just toggle the check mark, whichever you want. Uh, I don't like I don't like the choo choo train, but that's just me. But outside of that, well, we're finished. Uh, very short cutscene, easy to do. You can take what you learned here in this video and kind of apply it in different ways. If you want to make your cutscene longer or shorter, you want to have more movement. Uh, as we get more and more advanced and learn more and more skills, I'll actually show you how to make an opening cutscene that uses camera movement and all sorts of different things. Uh, like in most RPGs that you've probably played. So again, I just want to take the time to thank you for watching. Thank you for all the support. It really does mean a lot to me. Uh, so much to me, in fact, that uh, I've put everything else I've got going on in the back burner so I can uh, give uh, all you that have supported me, you know, my undivided attention. So uh, look for videos every Wednesday. And next week... Uh, I'm already working on the video. Uh, I'm going to answer some of the questions that I've been getting either through comments or from emails or in my YouTube inbox. Uh, I've gotten a lot of pertinent uh, questions that with the skills that we've acquired so far in our tutorial journey, uh, we should be able to address all of these issues that I'm about to go over uh, in the next video. So until, until, I, until next time, I'm Venthros. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next week.